Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. Now, this is the show where I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. Who's going to come out on top? Is it our seasoned dealers or our canny sellers? 170. I think it's worth a little bit more than that. What about another tenner? I won't be able to eat this. Of course you will. All right. When it comes to the auction, it's all about the gamble. Have they done the right thing? 300 online. Are you disappointed? Yes, I'm 320, 360. That's brought a smile to your face. All done, hammers up. People want to sit down with our dealers. They want to get involved. They want to walk away with the real deal. Today, we're in Denby in North Wales. First up with Corrie Jeffrey is Alan and his stunning porcelain. I brought in some Chinese blue and white vases and I just want as much as I can get for them. I'm going to try and charm Corrie as much as I can and go for it. <laughs> At the moment, Chinese vases sell really well, but they've got to be perfect and period, and I do hope these are. Hello, young lady. I'm a lady, am I? A young lady. Oh, you've made my day. That's going to be an extra couple of pounds on the table, definitely. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> And you've brought these pair of vases along today. Yes. Can you tell me anything about them? My great-grandmother had them originally, uh, handed down to my grandmother, and then down to my uncle who then handed them to me roughly eight years ago. So your great-grandmother? Yeah, yeah. And any Chinese connection? Anybody been out in the Far East? She married a seafaring man, and I can only assume that's where they came from. Do you not like them, or...? Well, I did, actually, but my wife didn't. They didn't go with the decor. They are Chinese porcelain, and they've been used as vases. I can see there's watermarks yeah. inside, but they might well have been containers with a little lid yeah. on the top. And I would imagine they're the second half of the 19th century, although they have an earlier mark underneath. They have a Chongzhen mark, which yeah. would be middle of the 17th century, yeah. 1600s, yeah. Yeah. but I don't think they are that date. I think they've been produced again yep. in the same style. Looking at the pattern, you've got these stylized rocks, yep. and you've got a cherry blossom tree, yep. and a bird, and he's looking up, I think in the hopes of when the cherries fruit, yep. and bamboo and a chrysanthemum. So a yep. fairly traditional is, yeah. set of Chinese motifs chips unfortunately so they've had a bit of a hard life yeah. i don't know whether they ever had a little lid but keeping that in mind i'm going to put some money down and you can only say yes or no yes or no. i'm going to put down yes or no <laughs> 20 40 60 60 on the table there you go very good, he says, but not good enough, not clearly. Quite. Not quite good enough. We well, were and I, on the table. I've jumped in quickly here because I think these are quite smart items. I know there's a couple of nibbles to the edges, but at 40 to 60 pounds, the pair, I'm going to say they're very cheap. 60 pounds is on the table. It would appear that Cory is right on the money. They've got to make £100 to go to auction to come home with 85 Otherwise, it's not worth messing around with. I think normally when I say that, there's a little bit of, of a twitch where the money is still... <laughs> is... Not what the weather. <laughs> no twitch. No <laughs> twitch today. There's no, no, twitch no twitch today. today, and I've noticed yeah. there's no money in the wow. hand today. So I leave it with you. Should you wish to gamble, I would only be too delighted to take you to the auction, though I'm wondering, is it really worth it? Thanks a lot, Mr Dickinson. Considering the damage, the 60 is my offer. To be quite honest, I did say I was going to take my family out for a meal. And 60 would take you and your wife? Ah, oh, but not the family. No, you'd have to leave them behind. <laughs> That's it. Looks like fish and chips. <laughs> very, very nice. Uh, 60 pounds on the table. How do you feel? Thank you very, very much. We have a deal then. Thank you, Kelly. I knew you were a lady. I like these vases, fair price, there's not a lot left in them. I'm happy we got his offer and it's fish and chips all round now. Don't forget the mushy peas. Can I 
Helen Gardner's been joined by Caroline and a very special tasty treat. We brought this bottle of whiskey here just to see what uh, we could get for it today. I'm not a whiskey drinker, unfortunately, but I maybe know a man who is. Could it be your fiance by any chance? You've brought in this amazing bottle of whiskey. I have, yes. And you haven't drunk it? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, now tell me all about this whiskey. Well, it's been under the stairs in our house for under about... Under the stairs? Under the stairs <laughs> for about 25, 30 years. My husband worked for Ally Breweries yep. at the time, and he won a competition as best salesman, and this was the gift he received. What um, was he selling? Beer. And he yes. gave him a bottle of whiskey. And he gave him a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> uh, and it's been basically under the stairs. Wow, and that um, was in the That in was the probably 80s. about 85, 86 he uh, so was given that. It must have been so in the 60s then. We think so, yes. Somewhere like there's no yes. date on it. No. Still looks a pretty good bottle of whiskey to me. <laughs> well. <laughs> now this particular one, the McCallum, is a very, very fine whiskey, very well thought about. It's a spay whiskey. It comes from the, the spay which right. is in the northeast of Scotland. Right. And there's huge amounts of distilleries all around there. Yeah. This particular one comes from a little village called Krigelachy. It's a good whiskey. Right. Nice bottle, nice presentation case. A little bit of the seal gone there, but not much. Now, I don't know what this whiskey's worth, but I'm sure we'll get some advice from someone <laughs> who maybe knows a little bit better than us. So, let me make you a little bit of an offer for this whiskey. Look, there is 100, 150, that's 200 pounds for your whiskey. What do you think about that? Okay, um, I think it's worth a little bit more than that. I you think. think it's worth more than that? I think it that? is, yes, well, I think. Well, there's someone coming who maybe know a little bit more than we do. <laughs> We have an estimate of three to four, which is a giveaway, come and get me estimate. I've seen bottles of this. If it's an 83, they bring 800 quid all day long. And I have seen some at 1,600 pounds. So we are talking a real rarity. We know for sure it's 25 years old, and we know it was won in either 80, Five, 85 or 86. Or 86. Yeah. So we can calculate within one or two years. It takes a real expert to know all these things, and most of those are the other side of the border at the moment. Now, <laughs> I'm going to let you into a secret. <laughs> now, just recently, the wee Helen <laughs> has become engaged to her long time partner. He's a whiskey man, personally, I can tell you that. And this could be an ideal. Wedding gift. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to jump the gun. I'm saying get 600 quid on the table. No. <laughs> no, I will put a better offer on the table, but it's not going to be the 600. 300 pounds. 350 pounds for your bottle of whiskey. You've got to think that if it gets the top end of the estimate that they're saying, then you're going to come down to less than that. But may do really well, £350. In fact, I'll make it £360. But that's me. I'm out. You wouldn't go to four? You've no proof of the date. Yeah. That's my reservation. Mm. I'll put another tenner in there. Well, that's me. £370. I'm, <laughs> I'm more than where I want to be. What are you going to do? I'm going to go to auction. Thank you very much, Helen. Doing very well in auction. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had no idea how much it was worth. I'm gobsmacked at the amount that it was worth. And auctioneer Simon Bowers pretty confident. Potentially it could be double that, so fingers crossed. Before the break, there was a lot of excitement over Caroline's 1960s bottle of whiskey. We are talking a real rarity. So she turned down Helen's offer of £370. But in the sale room, auctioneer Simon's got news that could dampen spirits. Came in with high hopes, but to be honest, not a lot of interest at all. So this is one which I'm a bit dubious about. Oh dear. Fingers crossed there are buyers here. Why did you turn that 370 quid down? 
Our independent value was said three to five. Did that influence you? A little bit. Did yes, you think, hang on a minute, it's worth a bit more? Maybe. I think so. Yeah. You're gambling now because your reserve is 300 quid. If it only made 300, the time you take away the commission, it's under 300. Are you regretting that? Very nervous. I am nervous now. <laughs> Very nervous. OK, let's see what this wonderful malt whisky brings under the gavel. A rare single malt, isn't it? Speaks for itself in the original presentation box or casket. And we start this at £200 and bid. £200. Two twenty with me at two twenty, two forty, two sixty, two eighty. Two sixty, two eighty. Two twenty, three sixty. Well, it's all online at the minute, and we are up to four hundred and sixty pounds and bid. Five hundred. We're up to now. Oh, wow. <laughs> five hundred. There are fifty again now. Then at five hundred pounds. That's for a smile to your face. She was a little bit worried. Five hundred and all done. Hammers up. £500 is the gross price. Take away the commission. A quick calculation says 410 I can see a bit of a relief yes. on your face. <laughs> Very. When I said, do you regret turning down the 370 you were thinking, oh, <laughs> should I? Anyway, on the day, it all turned out right. Not only that, it's the real deal. Cheers. 70. Well done, Caroline. The gamble paid off. We have a grandchild on the way, so I'm sure some of the money will go towards the grandchild. That's very thoughtful. Back in the den, Angela's hoping that her instrumental figures are going to be music to Michael Hogman's ears. I tell you what, I've got loads of buyers for them. I think I'll just flutter my eyelids and give as good as I get. That might just drum up a profit. You bought in a really interesting item, haven't you? Uh, well, I'd like to think so, yes. Yeah. You thought you'd sit down with the handsome, good-looking dealer. Well. Moi. Moi. <laughs> and um, see if you could get some of my money. Where did you get them from? Well, I got them from my father's house because um, he recently passed away. So um, brought them in to see whether they were worth anything. Yeah. It was just uh, unusual. I'll be honest with you, they are unusual. Because when you think of this sort of band, you think of New Orleans. Yeah. So he might have travelled your father yeah. and pulled them back? He was actually in the Merchant Navy, so um, he probably did get them from abroad. Yeah. And they're made of lead, hand-painted. These are enamels, the paint on these. Right. And each of them are playing a different instrument, with the drummer, the saxophone, the trumpet, the banjo. And a lot of these were made by a company called Britons. All right. Uh, who were an English company. And they made these sort of lead figurines of almost everything, farmyard animals, mm -hmm. musicians, and a lot of people use these for their train sets. Oh, so right. if they had a double O gauge, the big train set, yeah. they would put something like this on the train station, oh, just yeah. to make it yeah. authentic. Yes. So that's where I think the bias is going to be, somewhere like that. Right. I quite like them. I'm glad. Yeah. I'll have to get some money out <laughs> and see how much I do like them. That would be I, nice. It's one of those things you think just have what would I get for it and where would I sell it? Well, yes. But I still see it at 20, say 30 quid. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get the flavour of it. OK, New Orleans. I think it's a great fashionable little item. It's only lead, it's not bronze. No, it's exactly. It's souvenir quality but it has a little bit of magic about it. Now, Hoggy, you're right on the money. It's perfect. But perfect. my feelings were, surely it's worth more. 20 to 30 is what my independent valuers are saying. I think they're wrong. I think there's more humour and appeal with that. It gets you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> it's got you smiling. I think 30 quid's a good bid. If we go to auction and get 50, we probably have to take about eight quid off or something mm. like that. Exactly. But still, it's only 30, Hoggy. Yeah. Well, what about another tenner? Go do, on. Do, 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 I'll go five. Ten. That is really my fun. No. Go on. I've got to make go a profit. On. I've got to yeah. make a profit. Ten. I won't be able to eat this. Of course week. you will. Oh, all right. Ten, OK, <laughs> I'm getting out of the way. I think uh, 40 is all right, but I still rate it. You'll get out of this like that. So, Angela, 40 quid, can we do a deal? I guess we can. 
And you're frying in the gold cross? Definitely not the gold cross, but I'll take the money. <laughs> So, what did you think of the deal? Really good, thank you. And you do think I'm better looking in real life than David, then? <laughs> Nothing like blowing your own trumpet, Hoggy. I'm James, very nice to meet you. Will Jack's saucy little matchbox get James late spending a penny or two? I think it's very nice. Um, this sort of thing is quite popular, so I'm going to have a good go at buying it. Well, James seems a very nice fellow to me, and I hope to get as much as I can out of him. You brought along this beautiful, but slightly risque, Vesta box. On the front, for some extraordinary reason, there is this lady who's been taken short in a country lane. <laughs> and not looking the slightest bit embarrassed about it. No. Now, you don't look like the sort of chap that uh, collects smutty boxes. Well, I, I don't collect them, but oh. I like it myself. You like it yourself? Yes. Did you buy it? No, it was given to me by my father in law. Was it indeed? Yeah. He travelled all over the world. He was at New Zealand, Australia, Brazil, and I think yeah. that's where he might have got it from yeah. there. So how long have you earned it? 1967. Oh, a long time. Yeah. A long time. It's a brass box with a nice spring on the so lid. It's got a good spring, yeah. it, yes. To keep your little matches in. And then that's the side you strike, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's been yeah. used quite a lot. Oh, it has, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I thought it was French. I think you're probably right. Yeah. I think it's French, and I think it's probably towards the end of the 19th century, mm -hmm. about 1880. Yeah. This is enamel, coloured yeah. enamel, so this has yeah. all been hand-painted. It's not been chipped or anything. No, it? no, it's no. in lovely condition. Yeah. There are a lot of boxes that have erotic scenes mm -hmm. on them, yeah. but um, this is certainly up front, isn't it? You like it, then? I think it's very amusing. Yeah. I think it's very amusing. Would you buy something else if you, if you sell it? Well, we're going on a holiday, so it will oh, be yeah. up to about as a holiday. OK, well, I'll see if I can buy it from you. OK. I'd like to offer you 50, 1, 150 pounds for it. No, I think it's worth a little bit more than that. A bit more than that? Yeah, I should think so. OK. I'll try, we'll try another one. 170. No. Well, I've walked in to try and give a little bit of guidance. I, as soon as we saw this, we recognised the, dare I say, the novelty value. If you are a collector of Vestas, you probably would never have one like this. We have some very enthusiastic uh, estimations. We have 150 to 2, and then we have 2 to 3. So 170 is not a bad offer. If you want to go to auction, I'll be there with you. There is a possibility of finding a special buyer. OK, so we need to put mm. some more money down, I think, don't we? I think so, yes. Yeah. 190 and then one of these, £200. I think we have a deal there. We've got a deal at 200 It's James. Very good. Well, thank you very much for bringing it, and I'll try and find it a suitable home. Thank you very much. Well, I'm very pleased I got £200. I was only expected to get about 150 It's really difficult to put a value on, but I know that somewhere out there there's a collector who'll give me a profit. Let's hope you find him. We're straight back to the action, and Caris hopes this impressive Victorian lampshade will brighten Helen's day. It belongs to a friend of mine, and I know exactly how much she'd like for it, and I don't really want to go home with much less than £80. Let's see if you can lighten Helen's purse. What are you going to tell me about this light? Looks amazing. Well, it's not mine. I've brought it in for a friend. She can't come today because yes. her husband's poorly. All I know is it's come from a big Victorian semi in Hale. Looks like it. And she said it had hung there right from the day the house was built and stayed there until she moved herself about 15 years ago to a modern house which it has no place in, so it's been in a box. Well, I think it's magnificent, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's almost getting into a kind of lotes and kind of lalique look mm. about it. But I don't think it's continental. I do, I think it's probably British. But it's amazing. It's, I would say it's early 20th century. I would place it around 1910. It could be a bit more towards the 20s. We've got these lovely little clouds. We've got the Art Deco kind of columns here. And then we've got an approximation of a fleur-de-lis. 
going right down into a point. So you can see how nice it would be when it's lit up. I quite like the colour, and the colours are kind of beige, but it's also slightly apricot-y, sort of isn't pinky. it? Yeah. It's an apricot tone. And all the, all the original chains with it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like it? It's Paris? gorgeous, yeah. Gorgeous. Have you got a house that would fit in? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is the trouble, it's trying to find the right setting for it. So, do you think it's worth a lot of money, Karis? Well, not a fortune, but obviously, because I'm selling it for a friend, I want to get the best deal well, of possible. of course you do. Of course you do. How about 20, 40? How about 60 pounds for your light? Or your friend's light? Well, I know she wants a bit more than that. A bit more than that? Mm. It is rather nice. I'm quite surprising myself how much I'm liking it, actually. How about £65? Is that tempting a little bit more? No, I know how much she wants for it, and I'm thinking if I went oh. to the auction, I, you know, a commission and everything, it's, it's, yeah. it's worth more than that, I think. Take this £5 away, £70. If it was myself, I'd probably just keel over, but because it's for a friend, <laughs> I've, I've, got, course. I've got to hold out She's... for a little bit more. How about £75? Now, surely that must be getting very, very close. Is that your final offer? Do you know something? My first initial thoughts on this light was £80. So, I don't know how you've managed to get me to £80, but £80, that is my last and final offer. I'm sure she'll be very happy with that. So we're going to have a deal? We'll have a deal. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You got exactly what you wanted, Karis. I'm sure my friend will be very pleased with the money I've managed to get for her today. And Helen was very generous in her offer, so I'm very pleased with that as well. I'm quite happy I bought it. Whether I'm ever going to make a profit, who knows? We've heard that before. Now, Corrie's keeping her cards close to her chest for John's two William Mellor art pieces. He's a good professional landscape artist. As to value, well, we'll have to wait and see. I'm looking for seven to eight hundred pounds, and I will talk her into submission. Like your style, but just in case you need a helping hand, the Duke and auctioneer Simon are standing by. I'm looking at the subject matter, vibrant colours, they're a very good buy. I agree, David, the quality's definitely there. These are lovely, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And these are watercolours on paper. Yes. Yeah. And there are scenes, this one is the meeting of the waters in Bolton Woods. Mm -hmm. And this is Bolton near Keithley, not Bolton, Manchester. No. And here we have the ruined Bolton Abbey. It's showing, yeah. And again, the river, and it's the River Wharf. Wharf, yes. And they're signed by William, William Meller, so they're a matched pair. Yeah, they're a pair. And I believe that you found them... In an old coal house. A coal in, house? Yes. Coal house belonging to my uh, wife's auntie. One was a bit damaged, water damage on the side. And they said to her, what do you want to do with these, auntie? Oh, sling them, she said. Oh, I'd like them, because they're, because they're the fishermen on there. And she said to me, you take them home with you. So that's how we had them, 43 years ago. 43 years yes. ago? And do you like them? Yes, very much. Very, very pretty yes. pair, even though they're not framed the same. Mm. And the fact that one was water damaged? Yes, it's like water damage on that side. So you reframed it, it? I had it done as a local. But so this is the original frame? That's the original frame. Beautiful gilding, original gilt mount. Amazing that it's in this condition. Beautifully painted with these woods yeah. and all the different colours of the trees, a lovely mature woodland. And you've got a ruin here. Yes. Bolton Abbey. Yes, by Skipton. And have you been to that ruin? No, no. We've passed there, but uh, we haven't been. But we aim to go there one day. These were painted in 1890 to yes. 1920. I and I personally don't know the artist, yeah. but clearly he's very good. He's a very good painter. You brought them here today I to have, sell. Sorry. Yeah. Why, after all these years? Well, the children don't want them, so we go cruising a lot, so the money will come in handy for some drinks or something like that. Bolton Abbey, a very distinguishable landmark, well painted over the years. Now, I'm not sure where that is, the, the actual river with the fishermen, but a delightful picture. I really like them, and especially, as you said as well, the, the fishermen scene, yeah. I, I think, is, is delightful. 
and it's that classic sort of Victorian era feel to them. Where are you going to estimate? Well, they've got to be a couple of hundred each, so four, five, six for the pairs, something like that. I'm sure Corrie will go for these, but how much is she going to put on the table? We're going to put down 50, 100, 150. No chance. 170, 190. No, thank you. 210. No chance. 30. I'd want double that. You want double that, do you? That's for two pictures. I think that's low, uh, unless Corrie's sort of trying to factor in the additional cost of reframing and a little bit of cleaning, perhaps, but it sounds cheap. 250 on the table. No, and I, I, you're not impressed, no, are you? I'm impressed no, well. he's not impressed, David. No. Well, John's not impressed, and I have to tell you, I'm not impressed because William Meller, a recognised artist, both our independent value as an auctioneer, because of the performance of this man, they're all saying four to six hundred pounds. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling the subject matter, the sheer quality, and because they haven't had the sunlight on them, I think they're going to do well in the sale room. So how much now? 250 down. And I'll raise it to three, and at three I'm going to stop. I don't have that good results with watercolour, mm. so we've got 300 mm. on the table here. I think I'll take them to auction. So off to auction, and Thank I wish you, you the Carly. best of luck. Thank you. Colin didn't give me exactly what I wanted. I wanted a lot more, but I'm very excited. I like auctions. Only 300 offered. I think we should be four, five, maybe even a bit more. You have them in the sale room with a reserve of 400 quid. How lucky do you feel? Very lucky. Got a spark in his eyes, John. Let's see how lucky he is. A pair of William Mellors. Beautiful quality, aren't they, for a pair? And, um, well, we've got a low start, but we'll start them off at £200 and bid for the pair. At £200 and bid. 220, 240, 260, 280. At 280 pounds and bid, at 280, 300 online, 320. 320 in the room. Just remember, 340, 360, 380 in the room, at 380. 400 I've got online. They're 400, they're, they're reserved now at 400. Well, they're here to do their best, but there should be more. The quality's there, isn't it? At 400 pounds and hammers up and sold away then at 400 only. 400. Are you disappointed? Yes, I'm a bit disappointed. Well, I'm disappointed because a wonderful pair of pictures like that are worth more. Somebody got themselves a bargain on the day, £400, and he's going home with £328. The one thing to say is this, John. They were in the coal house. They were being thrown out, and you rescued them. You've enjoyed them for many years and you're now going on with 328 there quid. Are. So, yeah. there we are. That was the real deal. And £28 more than Corrie offered. I'm going to let my grandchildren enjoy the money and go on holiday. Terry, hello. James has been joined by Terry and his slipwear jug. So, where did you get it from? Purchased at a boot sale, and I paid a pound, and I would like 40 to £50 pounds for it today. That would be a huge profit. Slipwear jug? Yes. Terracotta body? Mm hmm So what's its history? Well, it's, uh, I believe, something that was called a harvest jug, James. Used during harvest time in the yep. fields. Filled with cider? Preferably. Preferably. And yeah. I've ordered some cider for Monday, as it happens. Yeah, so uh, this is why I'm wanting to sell it. And <laughs> to pay for the cider? Purchase the cider, <laughs> that's correct, yes. What's its history as far as you're concerned? I've owned it about six years. All right, okay. I purchased it in East Anglia. That's where I come from. Ah, right. It doesn't strike me as being an East Anglian jug. No, I believe it may well be Yorkshire. It's possibly Yorkshire and it's possibly Devon. Yes. yes. This sort of jug was made in great quantities in really all the places where there was clay. Yes. Thrown on a wheel, lovely slipwear decoration on top of the treacle glaze, 
and slip decoration. This was applied very simply with a brush by sort of really peasant potters. There was nothing sophisticated about it at all. It's in reasonably good condition. You'd be surprised to find one of these completely unchipped. Yes. Because, as you say, it's a harvest jug. It was meant to be robust. You take yes. it into the field, yes. you dish out cider to the, Very good. Yeah. To the troops. Mm. Very nice too. Are you a collector of pottery? Not really. It's just I liked it on the day and yeah. decided to purchase it. Yeah. I would date it around, well, I don't know, 1880, 1890. Is that what you think? I think 1860, 1870, possibly. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, this sort of thing is, park, yes. it's very difficult to date yes. exactly, isn't yes. it? Yes. Because there's, there's never a mark. No, that's right. And this sort of shape really is a medieval shape. Yes, is it? Um, it's slightly, mm. slightly more bulbous than the medieval mm. jugs, but it could have been made really anywhere between 1600 and 1920. Yes. yes. But the vast majority of them were made in the second half of the 19th yes. century. Mm -hmm. Why are you sending it? Because I collect other things, I'm into sporting memorabilia. So you'll place. recycle the money into that, something exactly, you, like, yes. you like more? Exactly, yeah. yes. Yeah. And you're not going to tell me how much you paid for it, I imagine? No. You're going to keep that to yourself ah, for yes, the time yes. being? Yeah. Yeah. Private. Yeah. Not very much, I should think. <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 40 quid for it. I was hoping for a little bit more, to be honest with you, James. I don't see it at a great deal more no. than that. Do you need a bit of help from David, do you think? I would like some help, if you Here don't mind, please. Well, I think this is right up James's street. I think this is something that he will particularly like. The lowest is 30, the highest is 60. I'm going to say on this occasion, it's about its money. Mm -hmm. Should you wish to gamble, you can do, but I would be tempted with the 40 pounds on the table. Thank you, David. Sounds like good advice to me, Terry. Very good advice, yes. So we've got a deal at 40. Yes, I'm happy to deal with you, James. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you very much. Along. And do you yes. want to reveal how much you paid for it? A pound. Goodbye. Yes. Thank you, I James. I shan't make that much. No. Thank you. <laughs> I'm really happy with the 40 pounds. That's uh, round about where I wanted to be. Thank you. I look forward to filling it up with cider and having a drink. Good for you, James. Winifred has some coins for hockey, and he's all guns blazing for the last deal of the day. Gold sovereigns, I just can buy and sell them all day long. I'll be bidding strong. I'm going to fight for every penny I can get, and a bit more than I'm expecting, hopefully. You bought in an instantly recognisable gem. Yes. Well, for me, they're gems. They're sovereigns. They're full sovereigns, aren't they? Yes, they are. Where did you get them from, Win? My husband got them, and I don't know where. He went out collecting anything, really, <laughs> especially small things. Yeah, and they've been stuck in your drawers for a while? About five years or so. Yeah. yeah. They're full sovereigns, which is 22 karat gold. Yes. They weigh eight grams. We know that because it's just a currency which we've traded in. I think it was George III was the first sovereign, it's about just after 1800. And oh. since then, every sovereign has produced a sovereign every year, as far as I know, oh, even I up to 2014. OK. When people collect these sort of coins, they collect by quality and how many times they've been handled. A lot of people keep these in little pouches, yes. clear pouches, a lot better for them than just leaving them loose. That's true, yes. And the less you handle them, the less this gets worn. It's like a file, really, like a nail file. So the better the condition, you know, the better they are to collectors, but they're always stuck at a price. Mm. What are you going to do with the money if we uh, do a little deal today? Pay my bills, I'm afraid. Pay your bills? Yeah, oh. nothing exciting, oh, unfortunately. Sad, <laughs> yeah. It's time for me to get my pile of money out. Mm, OK. Um, so I've got a rough idea. 50, 100, 50, 200, 50, 300, 50, 400, 50, 500, 50, 600, 50, 700, and 750 pounds. I would like to pay you for those. Afraid not. They're not worth a lot more than that. There's a small profit in there for me. What you've got to think about, when you go to auction, on top of that, it's another 15% hammer price. So that equates to an auction price of 800, 900 quid. Still not enough. 
Well, there's a very good start on the table there because eight to nine hundred pounds are the two estimations. And the value of the bullion content today is eight ninety-five. Now we've got to leave a margin for our dealer. I figure if we could get another 50 quid and you could get 800 quid, I'm going to say to you that will be the best cash deal or any deal that can be done rather than going to the auction. I'm stepping out, Hoggy. Okay. Get with the negotiation. I will. So I think that hits the nail on the head, doesn't it, really, about buying and selling at auction? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And 750 is uh, a start. So. I'll back David up and go, I'll go £10 more, I'll go £810, which, just a little teaser, that really is going to be my final offer. I wouldn't even hesitate at that. £90 is the potential profit here. Without like question, angle. that is a very good offer. Thank you, David. I think I'd better take some money back, Win. No, you mustn't do that. Are we going to deal? <laughs> yes. Let's do a deal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Augie. This will pay my bills for a little while. Sovereigns are the staple diet of antique dealers. There's always a profit there. So let's find out how much our dealers did make today. Helen paid £80 for the frosted glass lampshade. I'm quite surprising myself how much I'm liking it, actually. But it's still in her shop window. No profit for you today. I'm going to try harder. I really am. The condition of the Chinese vases worried Corrie. Considering the damage, the 60 is my offer. That didn't concern her client, but £5 is hardly worth shouting about. Terracotta body. James took the £40 slipware jug to a fair, where it was snapped up in minutes. It was an easy sell because anything you can put cider in is in demand. And he did even better with his Vesta case. I knew it would sell quickly because it's a really interesting thing. But it was Hoggy who stole the show today. The Duke piled on the pressure for the lead musical figures. What about another tenner? I won't be able to eat this. Of course week. you will. Oh, all right. Turned out he could splash out on a three-course meal. He also felt he'd overspent when he put down 810 quid for the five gold sovereigns. That is a very good offer. I think I'd better take some money back, Win. No, you mustn't do that. Hoggy held on to them until the gold price climbed, and that was a very canny decision. Yes. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time. For Dickinson's Real Deal, see you.